Well, this is Canada Place. It was built for the Expo 86. It's in Vancouver, and we're here for a cruise in Alaska. Come on, let's go. Well, hello everyone and greetings from Ketchikan, Alaska, the salmon capital of the world. And I've been here a few times now with different weather, rainy, overcast, sunny. I'm going to cut it all together. Hopefully it makes some kind of sense. So let's go check out the town. Okay, well, we'll start our walking tour of Ketchikan down by the water's edge because most of the town is very walkable, especially the downtown. The first thing you'll notice is that Ketchikan was built at the base of mountains, and because of that, it was sometimes difficult to build streets. Instead, long staircases were built and given street names. This is Barber Street, and it's usually included on various walking tours of the town. Once I arrive at the main cruise dock, I like to visit the Ketchikan Visitor Center. I find it's very informative and helpful in finding out what events and activities are available for the day. They have plenty of brochures too. But it's what's on the other side of the building that I find of interest. It's a famous monument sculpture that's usually the starting point for most visitors. It's called The Rock and it tells the story of how Ketchikan came to be. Sung by a native drummer, it features Chief Joseph with various prominent archetypes that helped build the city a bush pilot, a logger, a miner, a fisherman, and a pioneer frontier woman. Ketchikan is a small seaside town with a population of about 13,000. And because it's Alaska's most southeastern city, it's also the first stop for the cruise ships heading up to the glaciers. Ketchikan is about six square miles, and it has all the things you'd expect to see in a small town. It even has a nice indoor mall and food court for when it gets a bit chilly outside. But really, if you have the opportunity, you'd want to be outside. And what an outside it is. There's plenty of things to see and do. The next thing you'd be sure to notice is the fact that fish seem to be connected to everything in town. If you're a fish eater, well, you're in the right place. The Fish House is one of the more popular casual food eateries with a good selection of fish. It can get quite crowded during the busy season with people wanting to watch the harbor and enjoy a meal. But clearly, the star of the city is the mighty salmon. I always like to stop by the salmon market in downtown to look at the various specials they offer and enjoy all the free samples, too. It's a great place to learn about the five kinds of salmon you'll find here. I, for some reason, had a heck of a time trying to remember what those five salmon were. But I found a way to remember it, I can tell you. So how do you remember the five different types of salmon? Well, you look at your hand. Your pinky is the pink salmon. Your ring finger, well, imagine a silver ring on that, and that's the silver salmon. The middle finger, it's the tallest, so that's the king salmon. And your index finger, well, you're socking someone in the eye, and that's the sockeye salmon. And then with your thumb, well, that rhymes with chum, and that's the chum salmon. And that's the only five fingers I've got. Another great thing I'm sure you'll notice is the abundance of native art. 
Whether it's paintings or sculptures, you can find it everywhere. Probably the most frequent example of native art is the totem pole. Ketchikan has been called the totem pole capital of the world. And while I didn't count all of them to verify that title, there sure seems to be a different totem pole on every street. If you're wanting to learn more about these totem poles, or more importantly about the people and culture behind them, there's a great place in town to do so. It's the Tongass Historical Museum and Totem Heritage Center. They have a lot on display regarding the early years of Ketchikan and the Clinket tribe. The name Clinket translates to the people of the tides. Right behind the museum, you'll find a very popular area called Creek Street. It sits on top of the Ketchikan Creek, which is where the town gets its name. Years ago, it was the town's red light district. It's probably one of the most popular areas in town. Here it is during the busy season, and here it is in the off season. I think it's a much nicer time to visit just a month earlier. Ketchikan Creek is a great place to watch the salmon swim up the stream, and you can see it right behind its buildings. It was built over the water because it was easier than blasting into the rock. At one time there were over 30 brothels in the area, and during Prohibition it was the place to get Canadian whiskey. Many shops still have hidden trap doors that were used to receive their secret shipments in the dark of night. With its history of adult entertainment behind it, it's a great place to shop and have a meal, or just watch the salmon resting in the clear water below before their trek upstream. Still, you can find traces of Creek Street's adult past. One example is Married Man's Trail. This trail was said to be the way married men would approach the brothels without being seen from town. I decided to check it out too, and it turned out to be my favorite part of Ketchikan. I eventually found one of the longest staircases I'd seen in town. I just had to climb it to see what was up there. And I'm very glad I did, because now it's a place I visit every single time I visit Ketchikan. The views are amazing. From the top, you have a wonderful vantage point of the entire town, and you can look down and see Ketchikan Creek. Established in 1902 by Teddy Roosevelt, the Tongass National Forest is the largest forest in the United States, with almost 17 million acres. If you'd like to learn more about it, you should visit the Tongass National Forest Visitor Center that's right downtown. It has 20,000 feet of exhibit space and a 210-seat theater. Besides the exhibits, rangers give talks on a wide variety of topics. It's very fun and informative. After making it back down safely from Married Man's Trail, I make my way over to this visually striking building. It's Ketchikan Fire Station Number 1. Most people bypass it, but they really shouldn't, since there's a very interesting museum inside of it. While this is a working fire station that responds to over 2,100 calls a year, they do offer guided tours of the facility, if you give them a call in advance. Unfortunately, I didn't have time for that, so I just looked over their collection of antique helmets and other interesting displays. Oh, and don't forget the very cool fire truck. Once outside, I noticed off in the distance a series of cut trees laying by the water. With the roar of the crowd, I knew exactly what it was. It was the local lumberjack show. The Great Alaskan Lumberjack Show 
highlights Alaska's rich logging history. Its one-hour show takes place three to five times a day and features up to 12 athletic events. Usually its audience is divided into various groups to root for a specific team. Every time I saw it, it was the U.S. versus Canada. And during my trip, it always seemed to end the same way. Before I make my way back to the ship, I like to do a little shopping first. Nothing big really, just a postcard or two. It's something I like to do at all the ports I visit. Even though they're getting scarce to find, I try to keep up the tradition whenever possible. So far it's been a wonderful trip, but it's not over yet. There's more cities to visit in the next vlog, along with the glaciers. But first I need to get back to the ship and catch up with my dad. Well, here we are in Tracy Arm, or actually on our way to Tracy Arm. Uh, it's nice and cool. There's some snow, we're in the middle of summer, and we expect to see more snow and a little bit of a glacier. See that gully? Yeah. It's been carved out over the years. Once we get inside near that glacier, there's a lot more of ice floating around. It is nothing but majestic. It's the only word I can think of. Thank you so much for watching this video to the very end. And if you enjoyed it, well, here's a few others you might like too. But most important, a very big thank you to all those who've liked, subscribed, or left positive comments about the videos. It's made them a joy to make. And if you've already subscribed, well, don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified when a new video pops up. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time.